The Spalding story is a story of quality and craftsmanship, of quality that's obvious to any sportsman, just in the feel of a Spalding product. Any sporting goods salesman knows the Spalding feel of quality. That special Spalding feel is built in through careful planning and precise workmanship in 43 separate manufacturing operations. After forging, the club head is snagged, ground, and ground again. It's drilled, reamed, and threaded nine times in all. It's bumped, weighed, broached, and weighed again. Then it's stamped, scored, polished, and weighed once more. By this time, the club head has also been sandblasted and bathed in acid, submitted to 24 operations in all. When it finally passes inspection and is threaded to the shaft, there are still 25 steps ahead before this is a finished club ready to put in the hands of a customer. That quality feel comes from care and precision craftsmanship in every operation, from planned engineering and the maintenance of the highest manufacturing standards in the industry. Yes, Spalding sets the pace in sports, in every type of sports product, from the simplest accessory to the items requiring the closest tolerances. Whatever the sport, each Spalding product is designed and manufactured to the most exacting specifications. Official equipment for all major sports is supplied by Spalding or by Spalding owned Wright and Ditson or Reach. Spalding has made every baseball used by the major leagues since their inception. One more tribute to the quality standards which have kept Spalding setting the pace in sports. Most Spalding products are produced under one roof. The great 12 and a half acre Spalding plant at Chicopee, Massachusetts employing more than 2,000 persons. If you were to visit this factory, you'd find the world's most modern plant for the manufacture of sporting goods. You'd see giant machines helping to turn out sporting goods in a seemingly endless stream. You'd learn that many of the machines, like this one, are designed and built entirely within the Spalding factory for nowhere in the world can such specialized equipment be purchased. You'd see automatic machines working almost unattended on many jobs. Yes, amazing machines. But you'd find the real Spalding secret elsewhere, in the skilled workers who do the jobs which are beyond the scope of mere machines, the jobs that need the touch of human hands, the careful attention of prideful craftsmen, precision workmanship, is only possible to experienced hands. Hands like those of William Lozier, who's been grooving tennis rackets for over 30 years. Michael McCarthy helped make the first tennis ball at Chicopee 40 years ago. He's still a key man today. Golf balls are molded under precisely controlled conditions. Michael Fisher's been at the job for 28 years. The smooth finish on your irons probably came from the skilled hands of Ray McCubrey, 39 years on the job, or Omer Henault, 42 years. Yes, quality depends on craftsmanship, and craftsmanship comes only through experience. Watch the deft, sure hands of the Spalding workmen, and you'll see a large part of the Spalding story. The heart of any plant is its engineering department. It's here that the constant effort for improvement is centered. From engineering know-how like this has come the greatest improvement in golf club design since the invention of the game. The synchrodyned principle, which engineers a formula of physics into a set of clubs to give identical contact feel. You'll remember that we showed club heads being weighed and weighed again just before they were joined to the shafts. 
The final weighing allows a tolerance of just five hundredths of an ounce as the heads are checked against the mathematical formula. At this point, groups of heads are assembled, matched together in a predetermined relationship. These heads will never be separated until they're delivered to the customer as a matched set. Heads matched to shafts and grips to give related points of gravity and uniform swing weight. In short, the Spalding synchrodyned feel. The identical feel in every club. Each set has a registration number and a record card for weights, shaft characteristics, all pertinent information on every club in the set. If one of these clubs should have to be replaced, the owner will get another with identical playing characteristics even after many years. Now the club heads are ready for the shafts. Reverse threaded shafts, which are exclusive with Spalding. This type of assembly guarantees that the head will never loosen. Here the matched set is assembled for the first time. Clubs and shafts going through the factory as a unit. Spalding matched sets are the only ones produced in this costly fashion, with sets manufactured together instead of being assembled after production. These sets are truly matched. Here, shaft lengths are checked by the set. The exclusive Spalding form grip is shaped in cork and fabric. Its alignment must be precise in relationship to the club head. A wrapping of leather completes the grips. The clubs are ready for their all important check by the set to make sure they conform to the synchrodyned principle. Methods used for this synchrodyned check are secret, exclusive to Spalding, and the details cannot be shown. When a set passes this inspection, the player knows that uniform action at impact is built into each club. By the time the set is completed, 392 major operations have been performed, along with a host of minor ones, and the results of all these steps are recorded. All important measurements go on to the registration card, available for years if a replacement is necessary. Yes, Spalding irons set the pace. That Spalding feel is not accidental. It comes through synchrodyned engineering. It's built in by precision craftsmanship. Spalding woods are made only from carefully selected persimmon blocks. Persimmon for hardness and moisture resistance. First step is kiln drying for over two weeks under controlled temperature and humidity conditions. Then the wood block is turned, automatically cut down and shaped into a golf head. A set of whirling spinning blades cuts the block into an exact duplicate of a master on the other end of the lathe. The face of the head is routed out. A fiber face insert will be added. The sole is routed. The neck is drilled for the shaft in five stages. The drilled head and shaft, each coated with cement, are joined. Wood is bonded to steel in a few seconds by automatic electronic induction heat. Then comes one of the endless number of weighings. This one to determine the weight adjustment for the head under the synchrodyned formula. Each club in the set is weighted separately to balance varying shaft lengths and give uniform swing weight and feel. 
After a metal sole plate is fitted, the club is ready for facing. Exact matching to specifications by hand filing. Here, one gauge measures loft, the other hook or slice. Then the lie is checked. The face curvature is gauged. The club goes back for more filing, gently, carefully, until every dimension is exact. This is done by hand to achieve spalding quality. Now screws are added to strengthen the fiber faceplate. And the head is gently sanded down as a preliminary to staining and finishing. Before the final inspection, specifications are entered on the registration card. Then the same type of secret synchrodyne check used on the irons. The check that guarantees a truly matched set of clubs. After the synchrodyne check, when it's certain there'll be no more filing, the face of the club is scored for a better control of the ball. Spalding is one of the few manufacturers scoring through the screws. Two coats of varnish complete the job. There are already three coats of priming material. The manufacture of truly matched woods depends on the workmanship of real craftsmen based on the most modern engineering principles. That combination is a Spalding specialty. Also a Spalding specialty, a filing system that keeps the cards for every registered set for many years. When a customer wants an old club replaced, the card for his original set is taken from the file. If the club is a wood, the original master is located, the very one from which the first head was shaped perhaps many years before. And so from the old master turning form, or from the old forging, if the club is an iron, a replacement can be made, a perfect match for the other clubs in the set. Another Spalding specialty is the custom-made set for the man who wants his own specifications built into a set of clubs regardless of cost. The loft of an iron can be changed while still retaining the overall synchrodyned balance. Perhaps the customer has his own ideas on shape of the woods. An entire set of special masters can be made, each for the shaping of only one club. These clubs, too, will have that special Spalding feel, the balanced synchrodyned feel. Yes, Spalding sets the pace in golf. Spalding sets the pace in tennis, too. In an exclusive process, the laminations are cut wide enough for three rackets instead of one. The laminations come through the spreader along with a fiber strip. They're assembled in varying thicknesses and numbers depending on the type of racket. Most of the strips are ash, selected for strength and grain. A steel band covers the laminations for molding, and now the shape of a tennis racket begins to emerge. The varying thicknesses of wood and fiber will be pressed into one, glued together, and dried for two and a half hours in a 165 degree oven. After drying, the assembly is cut apart by automatic blades to form three separate rackets. Rackets for tennis, badminton, and squash are sanded and sanded again, 12 times in all. Stringing holes are drilled simultaneously, 29 at a time. Grooving between the holes is a hand job, however. 
no machine has been able to match this skill and speed. Again, the scales appear. Weight is a critical factor in every sports item. And one key to good tennis is weighting of the racket handle for proper balance. Stringing, of course, is the final touch. Spalding rackets are delivered either strung or as a frame alone. Among the types manufactured here are the autograph rackets such as the Beasley, the famous Crobat, the Wright and Ditson line, badminton rackets and squash rackets. Whatever the label, whatever the type, a Spalding made racket always sets the pace in its sport. The making of tennis balls is one function of the rubber department at the Spalding plant. Here a batch of rubber is milled and then conveyed to the extrusion machine. To ensure quality, Spalding processes its own rubber from the crude state. After the extrusion machine, the rubber is prepared for cutting into slugs. This batch will be formed into tennis balls, but the process is much the same, whatever the intended use of the rubber. The hydraulic press will form each slug into a shell, half a ball, exerting pressure of 237,000 pounds and maintaining a temperature of 292 degrees during the process. After exactly nine minutes, the press opens. This machine is but one of nine at Chicopee with a total maximum production of more than 100,000 shells a day. Here's some idea of the variety of output. Tennis shells are the biggest item, but there are also shells for play balls and even dog balls. Now, back to the tennis shells. The edges are dipped in rubber cement, then run through an infrared drying oven. Out of the drying oven and into the cement once more. Now, the molds containing the shells, opposite halves of the balls, are placed together, ready for the vulcanizer. The molds are still loose as they go into the pressure chamber. Inside, the air pressure will be built up to exactly 35 pounds, and the molds will be pressed together to trap that pressure inside each ball. After 31 minutes, the molds come out with a vulcanized tennis ball. The halves have been joined together, and now the balls are ready to move through an intricate conveyor system. First stop is a buffer, where the flashing is removed from the vulcanized edges. Next, they're tumbled, roughened, and washed. Then, out of the washer and onto the conveyors, which will carry the balls to a series of inspections and tests.
this is the bounce test. Any balls that fail to clear the barrier will fall below to become children's high bounce balls. The others go on to the dip machine. Here they are dipped in cement, then air dried. This prepares the centers for permanent adhesion with the covers. The covers are cut from the finest quality felt with nylon Dacron added. Like the center, the underside of the cover has been coated with cement. Pressed together and vulcanized, they form a permanent bond. Spalding tennis balls are pressure packed, the air pressure in the can exactly balancing the pressure inside the balls. The Spalding label means quality at every step. Golf ball covers in shell form are vulcanized over the centers and heated hydraulic presses. The centers are made of wound rubber thread, the covers of an exclusive secret Spalding formula. The golf balls are vulcanized and dimpled in this one operation under more than 300,000 pounds pressure. And after minor cleaning and buffing, will be ready for their first tests. An automatic electronic machine tests the compression of every Spalding golf ball to make sure of uniform hardness. As each ball is checked, it is recorded in one of four categories on a simple computing memory device. The balls are sorted automatically, an exclusive Spalding development which guarantees uniformity. Next comes a visual inspection with a check for roundness. Here the balls are sorted by the identifying numbers. After washing and preparation of the surface, they go on to the spraying machines. Each ball gets three coats of paint. When a golf ball bears the Spalding label, it means quality all the way through and uniformity in every ball, whether the distance air flight, the tough crow flight, the lower priced honor, or the popular Olympic. Baseball manufacture starts with a cushion cork center made in the rubber department. It's wound with yarn, 121 yards of it in this first layer. National League balls and American League balls are exactly the same. Each gets four windings, three of wool and one of cotton. All told, there's 370 yards of material by the time the horse hide cover is added. Stitching the cover, another job that's done entirely by hand. There are 108 double stitches to each baseball. American League and National League balls are identical except for the name. Reach for the American League. Spalding for the National League. Most softballs are made with Kapok centers, a mere three and a half ounces in weight, but large in volume. And each box full will make just one softball. The K-Pock is molded by pressure alone. No adhesive material is needed.
After the kapok has been preformed, the molds go into a curing press where hot steam finishes the job. Out of the molds, softball centers of pure K-pop, light, resilient, yet sturdy. Like baseballs, softball centers receive windings of cotton thread, three in all, before the covers are added. Spalding made softballs are also sold under the reach label. Whichever the label, the quality is the same. The best that engineering and craftsmanship can devise. Among other products, footballs led by the J5E are also star Spalding performers. Top grade molded basketballs, soccer balls and volleyballs are lined with airplane cloth. Leather panels are then cemented down to give a smooth, stitchless finish. Spalding originated this type of ball. The inflated centers of rubber-covered balls are first wound almost like a baseball. After being covered, they're painted in another automatic machine, one of the fascinating sights at the Spalding factory. But most fascinating of all are the things that are done to these products in the Spalding Test Laboratory. Production basketballs are squeezed to one half normal thickness at least 7,500 times. Tennis balls are compressed to a diameter of half an inch. Golf balls are guillotined. Baseballs are pounded and pounded. And softballs get the same treatment. While golf clubs are pulled apart. Most spectacular of all is the destruction tester for tennis rackets and tennis balls. This whirling monster churns up 272 revolutions per minute, smashing tennis balls to a speed of more than 100 miles an hour. Let's look at it in slow motion. This goes on and on until something breaks. A few hours gives balls and rackets far heavier treatment than seasons of play by the hardest hitting professional. The Spalding story is a combination of test and retest. Of endless hours spent in engineering. Plus utilization of the finest machines. And most important of all, the craftsmanship of skilled, experienced workmen. When any product leaves the Spalding plant, that product has been tested, inspected, checked, and rechecked. Yes, Spalding sets the pace in sports. That's the Spalding story. <laughs>